2.60 3D 3D <laughs> I'm in here I see you Greetings programs, it's Drunkens and Dragons here I'm Hank Infernal, your old buddy How to play D&D &D like a big old badass Step one is Drink a shit ton of Coors <laughs> What the hell am I doing? There's a handle there, not even in use Hang on a second The sewers of Golden, Colorado, I'll tell you what. All right, welcome back to another episode now that we got some of that out of the way because there's been a lot of that going on. It's time to talk about the next big step in Dungeons & Dragons crafting, ladies and gentlemen. It's 2.6D. System. All <laughs> right. It's surprising how much echo there is in such a small room. The hell is 2.6D, you ask? Well, I hope that you're asking that because I'm about to talk to about it for like N minutes and it's gonna be terribly boring if you're not interested in what 2.6D is. And it is not a drawer in a Dewey Decimal system looking up system. What do you call that thing? Card index. 2.6D is not, and it's not a bra size either. Why am I waving this at you? Because this is the past. It's over, you guys. Look at this thing. You're like, hankering. like two weeks ago, you told us how cool these things were. Yeah, well, welcome to the land of amateur video making where you have no idea what's gonna happen next. These were pretty cool too, actually. They give you so many in the box and they all like fit because they're properly made unlike everything I make. And I was like, hey, this is cool. I'll have like a normal dungeon and everybody will think I'm normal. And then I'll find validation that way among the human race. No, no, this is over. And I'm like, where's my guy? Where's all the action? I can't see it. It's behind all the cool 3D stuff. So he invented the 2.5D system. Well, I just put another point one on it. So get ready to have your mind blowed up because 2.6D is a blend of all the crazy 3D gridless stuff and the modularity, fog of war, and room corridor buildability of 2.5D. So, without further ado, let's just get right into it. This is what it is built of, you guys. It is made out of made out of shit tons of milled popsicle sticks, tongue depressors, as the more crude among us like to call them, and then about five or six hundred of these little one by one by quarter inch pieces of styrofoam. Now, you guys could probably seen some other techniques that I've done of how to make this stuff in bulk, but you gotta make it in bulk. You can't make like five of these and go anywhere. Okay, so that's the materials you're gonna want. So you're gonna wanna cut up all your sticks and you wanna cut up all your foam into little tiles and you're thinking to yourself, where did my life go? Well, you're gonna get there. So eventually, you're going to glue all of your little tiles together and then do your normal sponge paint routine, right? So that's black base, gray, lighter gray, lighter gray, and a little touches of white. And that way all your cavities will paint in properly and you'll get this classic DM Scotty kind of sponge paint look, right? Everybody's been doing this for years, no big deal. But then, boom, what is it? Oh my God. Did you cut up all those tongue depressors and take all that time and use like Thompson's stain, which I did on these guys, and dry brush them with a little bit of a highlight. So you can see they look, you can see that the tiles on the wooden side look a little bit worn and have really strong highlights. Um, that's just because you use a classic dry brushing technique. So it will bring out the grain in your wood and it will actually make your stain play this fun role of dark while your dry brush uh, plays the role of highlight. And if you want to dry brush, it's real easy. Just dip your brush in paint rub all the paint out on a paper towel or piece of cardboard and then brush lightly over your stained wood. There you go. That's how you get the reversible setup built. Now when you first put these together, you're going to glue all your little squares together and it's going to feel hella flimsy to, to be totally west coast with my vernacular here. Hella flimsy. So you get your crisscrossing wood pieces and glue them down. Not only does it give you like a cool implied grid, 
So if you notice, I mean, you don't have to zoom in or anything, but the characters will fit perfectly on one crisscross of popsicle sticks. Um, as you glue down all your tongue depressors or popsicle sticks, you will notice that not only do these things get hell of strong, because they really do get super tough, they also get really heavy in an awesome way that will give them a lot of weight when you're using them on the game table. Now, why would you want wood and stone? Have you ever given your players a magic item or a boost of some kind that works when you're walking on stone? Like Duragar have it. I would say Dark Elves would have it. Deep Gnomes would definitely have it. They're very nimble on stone. And after a while, your players are like, I, these buffs are lame because everything we do is stone. So when you're playing a lot of the older Hanker and Fernail terrain that you guys have seen. It's like everything is made out of granite, right? Not fair, bro. So what if I have like boots of wood walking? That's when you need wooden floors. What about when you're in a tavern? What about when you're in a castle? What about when you're in a hovel? When you're in a house, you need wooden floors, but you don't want to make two floor systems. Okay, you know why I did it. So now the details of what I did. I made squares, I made bigger squares, I made small squares, I made little two by one pieces. It's a lot like making a Lego kit. But you seriously do not want to be sitting here figuring out how many of each piece you made. So what I did, because I'm always boneheaded and take the laziest method to the, to the success that I can, I just took the boxed set that D&D makes of 2D tiles, which I hurled one of them on the floor already, and for each one that's provided in the box, I made a 2.6D tile of that size. So every piece of capability that I had from the out of the box solution, I have now with my 2.6 system. So that way I didn't have to decide how many two by fours do I need to make? How many four by fours do I need to make? I just made as many as came in the kit. Is the kit God? No, but at least it keeps me from deciding. And it's just like Devo said, man, freedom from choice. That's what I really want. Um, so what makes it 2.6D? A couple of other key steps, which like DMG Info I've done, DM Scotty's done, Wylock does it. All of the awesome crafters out there that I am just, my mind is constantly blown by how awesome they are. They're all doing it. You incorporate 3D elements like doors and you want openable, closable doors. You incorporate 3D elements like walls because sometimes you just want, you know, you got a floor and you just want a nice big burly wall there and then a door and then boom, reveal, right? There's just something about a 3D wall that just feels right. And then here's a little wooden walkway and then over here and there's a pit right there, whatever. Also, you want 3D elements like me and Scotty make, which are these LED elements. So LED torches, fire pits, anything you can come up with. Uh, also, to do elevation, I use these from one of my very earliest vids, which is like a, a sort of one and a half inch by one and a half inch wooden block. And it's just sponge painted. And then you take your little popsicle stick bridge and you just stick it on there. And does it give you true 3D relief and height? No, but it breaks you out of just 2D and doesn't take you so far that you're in... Yeah. This is when 3D goes too far. Ooh. Like, I can't even see what my character is doing, dude. I don't even know where to roll my dice. Now, is this a cool, like, one-off piece of terrain? Hell yeah, but as a game board, get out of town. You gotta be kidding me. You're getting too into your own sculpture. So, Foxy and Stills, get back on your feet there, buddies. So, that is what I'm calling 2.6D. You keep the 3D elements, like these great Duragar pillars with a little ladder between them, right? And Stills is running across here and he's barely making his dex checks. And poor little Foxy is chasing behind him and oh my god, the 3D of it is so dope. But you keep the 2D element, which is making floor plans like this. Like your characters walk up here, Stills comes up here and makes his perception check around the corner. And then I draw the corner for him. And then he runs up here and then I reveal the room to him and reveal the door. It's really hard to do that with 3D. But why is it 2.6 and not 2.5? Because this stuff is 3D. So it looks kind of flat and 2D like a map, but it has all the texture and all the thickness and variety that all my 3D sculpture has. 
So you can see this is some of my earlier work and it's kind of flat and like Yonzor's and also lacks some of the grid cues that make things magic. So how do you do it? Get yourself a good sense of how many 2D pieces you need. Use either a scroll saw or incredible patience or like child labor to cut up a million of these little things. Same thing, child labor, scroll saw or other solution to cut lots of clean, incrementally cut popsicle sticks. So you want them to be like six inches, five inches, four or three, two and one and make a hundred of each. Like go crazy. You've got like eight by four foot sheets of polystyrene sitting in your room. Put that shit to use. Now by now, I've seen a lot of you guys making rolling boxes and terrain pieces, and you've definitely mastered the art of Zacto stone cutting, which is where you gotta put cracks and nicks and interesting variety in all your stone. Pardon me for just a second. Damn, that's good. Uh, that's about it. So it's 2.6 because Scotty is brilliant in that he keeps his game flat enough where you can see it. I was doing some really fun avant-garde stuff because like a lot of you guys out there, I was just like, screw it, I'm going full 3D, I don't care. That's where you get stuff like this. It's just a giant foam wall. But somewhere in between 2.5 and just full crazy 3D, there's a beautiful place and it's where the grid is 3D. And it matches perfectly to something. This is true 3D right here. Boosh! So you can see how well this sets up where the materials and the paint technique and the depth and the texture are all the same so that when I transition from 2.5D or 2.6D <laughs> right into 3, it feels perfectly seamless, right? And that's the magic. That's it. That's it. Fuck it. So now the rest is all classic techniques that you've learned from a million different crafters. There's so many brilliant people out there. Oh, you probably saw that too. I've been gluing pennies to the bottom of everything lately. The drop weight to it. This is the bomb. Um, and then also having wood. I've noticed that there's way too much stone going on. You don't want to get trapped as a DM pushing your story to where your crafting has already gone. Don't do that. That's not cool. You want to be able to push the story to wherever the players and you want to take it, not where you already happened to do some crafting. All right, I'm getting a little out of hand now. Getting a little too excited. Here, there's a dwarven, or wait, it's not dwarven, this is elvish for God's sake. No dwarf would carve a curve in a stone like that. Stone there, and, and it, it's fully 3D, but since it's all painted and made out of the same stuff, it perfectly matches your floor plan system. Oh my God, Hank and Fernand, it's too cool, I'm freaking out. Right. Now, do these little 2D guys that come in the uh, Pathfinder pawn boxes perfectly fit? Not really. Boop, hi there, I'm a giant Hydra. But you know, it's not that bad. And it also makes the players even cooler now. They're real, they're 3D, and it's like, hey guys, this is the only thing I have for a Hydra because I can't afford that awesome set of 90 minis that's on Facebook right now. <laughs> so, so this will still get that job done of like, what if you need a bunch of bats? What if you need a bunch of snakes and you don't have the minis for it? Use these, man, don't be shy. Everybody's gonna have a good time. And since everything is built on a one by one grid, the bases of these Pathfinder minis, which are awesome by the way, will perfectly fit on your 2.6D terrain. And you can see the fit on there as well, where the crisscross implies the grid. That's about it. So that's the system you're gonna be seeing me use in the Campaign Encounters series, which is where I'm gonna go ahead and build an ongoing story, including the encounters that push that story with you guys on the channel, and we'll see where it goes. So that's about it for now. Strength, honor, and beer. I gotta keep it old school on this one. And pretty excited about 2.6. So get her done. You know, hire, hire, you know, 20 or 30, 8 to 10 year olds, they're very industrious and I bet they can make you a few hundred of those styrene tiles in a few hours, you know. I already said strength, honor, and beer, so I'm just going to say beer, honor, and strength. Peace. With Mountain Dew, Pokemon, and whatever the hell else people of that age group are interested in nowadays. Pudding Pops, for example. They probably like Pudding Pops. I like Pudding Pops.